For what purpose does the gentlewoman from New Mexico seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 4352. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 4352, a bill to amend the act of June 18, 1934, to reaffirm the authority of the Secretary of the Interior to take land into trust for Indian tribes and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from New Mexico, Ms. Leja Fernandez, and the gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Westerman, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from New Mexico. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five <laughs> legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous matter material on the measure under consideration. Without objection. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. H.R. 4352 amends Section 19 of the Indian Reorganization Act to allow the Secretary of the Interior to take land into trust for federally recognized Indian tribes, regardless of their date of recognition. Over a decade ago, in the Carcheri v. Salazar case, the Supreme Court held that the Secretary of the Interior's authority under, Indian, under the Indian Reorganization Act to place land into trust for a tribe applies only to tribes that were under federal jurisdiction in 1934. Before the Carcieri decision, the Department of the Interior, under previous administrations, had consistently interpreted the Indian Reorganization Act as authorizing the department to take land into trust for any tribe, as long as the tribe was federally recognized at the time of its land into trust application. Placing land into trust is vital for tribal sovereignty and self-determination. And we must remember that most of the land sought to be placed in trust is actually historic land, aboriginal land of the tribes themselves. And they are simply seeking to reacquire it and to have the same trust uh, protections placed on that land as their other land. Um, the place in land into trust also confers important protections, benefits, and flexibility for tribes, including protections essential for supporting tribal cultural practices and well-being, as well as their ability to exercise jurisdiction over that land. However, the Carcieri decision overturned 75 years of the Department of Interior practice by holding that the Indian Reorganization Act provided the Interior Department with authorization to take land and trust only for tribes that were federally recognized at the time of the enactment of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934. As a result, court's decision created a two-tier system of the haves and have-nots among federally recognized tribes applying for trust land acquisition. Now, tribes that have been recognized after 1934 cannot apply with the Interior Department to have land taken into trust. Instead, each of these tribes must seek new legislation from Congress every single time they have a similar land request. We have already seen the real-world consequences of the Carcieri decision, as year after year, Congress has to pass standalone bills for individual tribes on a piecemeal basis to protect their lands. In fact, in a few moments, we will consider exactly such a bill. The Carcieri decision also opened up tribes to costly lawsuits regarding land that they have held in trust for years, sometimes decades. It's taken almost a century for us to begin undoing the damage we inflicted on our nation's indigenous peoples upon colonial contact. The 1934 Indian Reorganization was an important step in that uh, healing process with the tribes, but we now know that our work is not yet done. We are still federally acknowledging tribes to this day. We passed a tribal recognition bill here in the House on November 1st. To this day, Congress is still working to right many wrongs from the federal government. We are still striving to return a portion, just a small portion, of the land back to the tribes. To say that tribes federally recognized after 1934 are somehow inferior to tribes federally recognized before is dangerously ignorant of the idea that we, right now, are an Indian land. H.R. 4352, introduced by Representative Betty McCullen of Minnesota, will write this long and amend the Indian Reorganization Act to ensure that all federally recognized tribes are treated equally, regardless of their date of recognition. 
For more than a decade, the Karcheri decision has caused anxiety and confusion in Indian country. It's created dangerous legal ambiguities related to Indian trust lands. Passing this bill will remove the ambiguity and uncertainty surrounding land into trust and finally offer all 574 federally recognized tribal nations peace of mind that their lands can be protected. I urge the swift adoption of the bill and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Yeah, Madam Speaker, as the gentlelady described, this is a very complex issue with a long history behind it. And H.R. 4352 would reverse a 2009 Supreme Court decision, Carcieri versus Salazar, which held that the Indian Reorganization Act does not authorize the Secretary of the Interior to acquire land and trust for tribes that were not under federal jurisdiction in 1934 when the act was passed. The Carcieri decision created vast uncertainty over the fee to trust process for tribes and impacted stakeholders. Since the decision was handed down, there has been no resolution in this incredibly complex issue. Lands taken into trust are extremely important to tribes. Tribes' desire to increase their tribal land base and help their communities must be respected. There are certain benefits and advantages afforded to tribes having lands that are held in trust. But we should be clear that even prior to Carcieri, the fee to trust uh, was far from perfect. We should not ignore the larger need to improve the process. Many have argued the current Bureau of Indian Affairs process provides very limited incentive for community stakeholders to be partners and places little requirement on the BIA to analyze the impacts of a fee to trust decision on nearby communities or tribes, often resulting in unresolved conflicts and litigation at the local level. For the last decade, county governments have been asking us to reform this process. Their concerns with the tax, zoning, and community impacts of trust land acquisition have been well documented. While this bill addresses the immediate impacts of the carcieri decision, if this bill becomes law, nothing will have changed to address the larger issues with the fee to trust process. Congress should address the impacts of the carcieri decision and act needed reforms to improve the fee to trust process. Tribes and all stakeholders deserve as much, and I look forward to working with them on this important issue. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Madam Speaker, from Mexico is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield five minutes uh, to the gentlewoman from Minnesota, and I also would like to offer my gratitude uh, to the gentlewoman for the hard work she has put, in, put into this bill so that we can resolve this issue now and into the future. The gentlewoman from Minnesota is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the gentlewoman from New Mexico for the generosity of the time. As the author of H.R. 4352, I rise to encourage all of my colleagues to join in this bipartisan effort to end discrimination against tribal nations and to ensure that all 574 federally recognized recognized tribal nations have the equal ability to restore their homelands and the Department of Interior's fee-to-trust process. This bill would confirm Congress's intent that the Indian Reorganization Act authorizes the Secretary of the Interior to place land into trust for all federally recognized tribal nations, regardless of their date of recognition. Let's be clear. What's at the heart of this bipartisan legislation is equality. All 574 federally recognized tribal nations deserve to have equal access to the federal process for restoring their homelands. The U.S. Supreme Court's 2009 Carcier decision violated this equality principle by forcing a two-tier system for the Department of Interior's fee-to-trust process. One process for tribal nations federally recognized before 1934 and a different process for tribal nations recognized after 1934. Carcieri imposed on federally recognized tribal nations an unfair, separate, and unequal process, a fundamentally discriminatory process for restoring their homelands. Now is time for Congress to fix this blatant discrimination against tribal nations. For over a decade now, tribal governments and Native American organizations have prioritized a clean Carcieri fix. 
the president of the National Congress of American Indians, Ms. Fawn Sharp, made the following statement, and I quote, Cartieri has effectively created two classes of tribal nations, has overburdened tribal, federal, and state resources by generating unnecessary conflict over the restoration, retention of tribal homelands, and consequently impeded economic development. NCAI strongly encourages Congress to end this turmoil by enacting the Congressional Fix to the Indian Reorganizational Act, which reaffirms the Secretary of Interior's authority to restore tribal homelands for all federally recognized nations. Chief Kirk Francis of the <clears throat> Penobscot Nation and President of the United Southern and Eastern Tribes USET adds his support in saying, and I quote, homelands are essential to exercising tribal government, authority, protecting our cultural identity, and the fund foundation to our growing economies. After decades of federal efforts to diminish our homelands, placing land into trust is a critical aspect of the federal government's trust and treaty responsibility obligations, righting these historical wrongs. For years, elected tribal government leaders have told Congress repeatedly that the Cartieri decision has caused significant hardship and has created second-class status for tribal nations when it comes to restoring their homelands. Tribal governments currently experience enormous time and scarce resources fighting Cartieri-based lawsuits. For example, the chair Chairman Tom Wooden of the Samish Indians in Washington State supports this bill by saying, and I quote, H.R. 4352 will help right the past wrongs of the Department of Interior and enable the Samish Indians to move forward in reestablishing our homeland, rebuilding our community. In 2018, the Interior Department approved the tribe's trust land application for 6.7 acres after a nine-year process to complete a Cartieri analysis. The department decision is tied up in endless litigation based upon Cartieri. This bill would stop frivolous litigation to ensure that no other tribe has to go through what we went through." End of quote. Members, this is why we need to take action today to pass a clean Cartieri fix. Since the 2009 opinion, members in both chambers of Congress, both Republicans and Democrats, have introduced legislation to restore the original intent of the Indian Reorganization Act. This is a completely bipartisan issue. In fact, I will say it is a nonpartisan issue. This bill restores the fair and equal land to trust process, which is fundamentally responsibly within our government to government relationships with all federally recognized tribal nations. Last Congress overwhelmingly uh, supported my colleague, Representative Tom Cole's legislation to fix this longstanding issue for Indian country, which I proudly co-sponsored. Today, I ask my colleagues to join us again in passing a clean Cartieri fix. Madam Speaker, tribal nations should not be discriminated against because of their date of federal recognition. The date has no bearing on their existence as sovereign nations, so it should have no bearing on their right to reestablish their homelands. I urge my colleagues to support the bill. The gentlewoman from Minnesota's time has expired. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield four minutes to the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Gozar. The gentleman from Arizona is recognized for four minutes. Madam Speaker, I thank the ranking member for yielding such time. I rise today in strong opposition to the current form of H.R. 4352. In 1988, Congress enacted the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, or IGRA, with the intent to restrict casinos to tribes' original reservations. H.R. 4352 reverses a major 2009 Supreme Court decision, and the bill would lead to future abuses of IGRA. The bill gives unelected bureaucrats a blank check to take any land, anywhere in America, into trust without respect for impacted communities, including other tribes. More importantly, H.R. 4352 allows reservation shopping and for lands to be taken into trust for off-reservation casinos in places where states, local governments, and other tribes oppose such action. H.R. 4352 will result in a flood of new off-reservation casinos that cause harm to states and local communities. Many of these casino locations are nowhere near tribes' historic reservations and will be handpicked by gambling investors and Washington bureaucrats. If H.R. 4352 passes, all tribes will have to do in order to get land taken into trust and open off reservations is to show that they are federally recognized by the Department of Interior. The reality is that this bill could be fixed. 
Last Congress and committee, we talked about the importance of finding common ground on which to address community concerns about off-reservation casino abuse and the valid concerns brought to the committee by state and county governments. H.R. 4352 would be considered under an open rule and amended prior to being brought to the floor to address these real bipartisan concerns about the real-world impacts of the bill. Take it from me, Arizona knows. Taking land into trust divests the affected state and local governments of jurisdiction. When land is taken into trust, for example, the tribe will pay no applicable taxes on the land, but the county or city which the land is located might nonetheless be required to supply the tribe with county and city, city services, and non-tribal residents will pay for it. At least consultation should be a, min, a, a, a minimum. Tribes demand this in reverse. The bill is currently drafted, therefore, increases the power of an unelected bureaucracy to divest non-consenting state and local governments of jurisdiction over their land. This by itself is a great cause of concern. Let's be clear about H.R. 4352. A bill of the scope and magnitude deserves more careful consideration than is being given here today. Currently, there are almost 600 recognized tribes in the United States. About 240 of them have gaming operations. H.R. 4352 removes the dam that provides some restraint on the number of tribal casinos and would be a dramatic departure from the existing federal law that has been placed for almost a century. Before voting on a bill, of this magnitude. I hope members all understand that H.R. 432 will open the floodgates to off-reservation tribal casinos all over the United States. If H.R. 4352 passes, all federally recognized tribes will be eligible to receive land and trust and potentially open off-reservation casinos. This includes any tribe recognized by the Department of the Interior that was ineligible to receive land and trust and or was denied land and trust prior to H.R. 4352. According to the National Indian Gaming Rec Commission fact sheet, as of 2016, approximately 329 or 58% of the recognized tribes have no gaming operations. There is a responsible way for Congress to address these issues. Just one month ago, the House passed H.R. 4881, the old Pascal Community Land Acquisition Act. The broad bipartisan bill was done exactly the way it should have been done. Community input, broad bipartisan support, and most importantly, congressional oversight. But H.R. 4352 ignores all of that and more and lets an unelected bureaucracy give whatever land it wants to all recognized tribes. Thus, the important process that made H.R. 4881 a success would be ignored if H.R. 4352 passes. Let's be clear. Passage of H.R. 4352 will allow for new off-reservation casinos to be opened in your states, in your communities, in your backyard, and for land to be ripped away from local jurisdictions without recourse. As I have constantly said, good process equals good policy equals good politics. This wasn't done. I urge all members to vote no on H.R. 4352, and I yield back my it's time. expired. Gentlewoman from New Mexico Reserves. Gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. Madam Speaker, I recognize the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Cole, for four minutes. Gentleman from Oklahoma is recognized for four minutes. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I want to thank my good friend from Arkansas for yielding and being so generous with the time. Madam Speaker, I rise in strong support of H.R. 4352 by my good friend, uh, Representative McCollum of Minnesota. Uh, I'm proud to co-sponsor that legislation. The legislation amends the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 and reaffirms the right of the Secretary of the Interior to place land into trust for federally recognized Indian tribes. Madam Speaker, as I'm sure most people in this House know, uh, the history of the relationship between the United States and Indian tribes isn't something to always be proud of. And frankly, with the passage of the Dawes Act in 1887, tribes all over the country, but particularly in my state of Oklahoma, were systematically stripped of their lands, and individual tribal members uh, were as well. I know this because my tribe was one of the victims. My family were, were some of the losers in the process. Um, in 1934, the federal government wisely saw that it had made a bad mistake, intervened with the Indian Reorganization Act to protect the remaining Indian lands and to allow modest additions and reacquisitions of that land. And for 75 years, it worked pretty much the way it was supposed to work, whether it was a Democratic or a Republican administration. Land was protected and modestly brought back into trust. Only 9 million acres so far since 1934. So it's not as if we've had a large transfer of land back. But we've protected what was there and added back to tribal patrimony where it made sense. Uh, all that was upset by the Carcieri versus Salcar decision in 2009. 
And that was a really bad decision, quite frankly. Uh, and it did, as my friends from New Mexico and Minnesota both pointed out, upset the balance, create a two-tiered system, and penalize tribes that had not been uh, federally recognized in 1934. That, by the way, wasn't just, quote, unquote, new tribes. A lot of them, the case was, uh, was uh, based on the Narragansetts in Rhode Island, actually had been around for a long time. The Narragansetts are in the same place they always were. They were recognized by the state of Rhode Island, but for some reason weren't in the 1934 bill. So a lot of people have been victimized by this, and frankly, a lot of interests have tried to exploit it. Um, we have an, had an opportunity on a couple of occasions to fix it. Actually, this House should be proud. In December of 2010, amendment to an appropriations bill, actually supported by my good friend, uh, Ms. McCollum, it was my amendment. We got it out of the House, but it died in the Senate uh, that same December. And to, as my friend from Minnesota alluded, uh, we passed legislation in the last Congress to deal with this issue on an overwhelmingly bipartisan vote. Uh, I, I just say for the record, I've introduced legislation on this every year since 2009. My friend, Ms. McCollum, has done pretty much the same, and we've always co-sponsored one another's uh, legislation. So I'm very proud to be here and support her. Uh, I urge passage of this bill. It's a matter of justice for the tribes, but it's also a matter of equity uh, and a matter of, uh, frankly, legislative convenience. Uh, so, Madam Speaker, I strongly support my friend's bill, H.R. 4352, and urge its passage and yield back. Gentleman, gentleman from Oklahoma yields back. The gentleman from New Mexico is recognized. Madam Speaker, I truly appreciate uh, Representative Cole's bringing into the discussion about this bill the fact of how it's impacted his own tribe and their ability to take land into trust and not be and not be subject to these unnecessary, frivolous, and time-consuming as well as expensive lawsuits that just create confusion out there. And so I think that the fact that he has worked on this every year since we had the Cartieri decision tells you, the, tells you so much about how on both sides of the aisle, on both sides, uh, House and Senate, we are looking for a fix, and this is indeed the Cartieri fix. Uh, Madam Speaker, I have no further requests for time and would inquire whether my colleague has any remaining speakers on their side. Gen gentleman Reserves, gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. Madam Speaker, I have no further speakers on our side, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman, gentleman from Arkansas yields back. The gentleman from New Mexico is recognized. Madam Speaker, I once again urge my colleagues to support this bill. We must remember that all we are doing is making sure that all tribes have the same access to the existing statutory law that allows tribes to take land into trust. We are not changing any of the other laws that would apply to that trust process. And I myself, have engaged in numerous land into trust transactions when I was attorney, and I can tell you they are not easy. You must show that you had a connection to the land. What will you be doing with the land? How did you communicate and discuss the issue of taking land into trust with the nearby communities, with the local governments, with the state government? You know, is this Aboriginal land? What will you be doing with the land? Let's go through the NEPA process. It is not an easy process, but now, Every tribe will be able to have the same access to the same statutory process when we pass this law. Madam Speaker, I urge my colleagues to support the legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from New Mexico yields back the balance of her time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill, H.R. 4352? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. Gentleman from Arizona. Gentleman from Arizona. I ask for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Section 3S of House Resolution 8, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings are postponed.